Today we're creating a moon phases chart. And if you're new, hello, my name is Nisha and I teach watercolor and illustration tutorials. I'm starting by measuring out my circles. I'm having a full moon right in the center and I'll put smaller circles for the other phases. It's just the design I went with. You are welcome to do any design that you like. You can make them all exactly the same size as well and that would look really fun too. Also remember to erase any pencil lines. It's a lot harder to remove those once you've painted over those marks. I also have some salt on hand in addition to my paints and brushes, paper and water. Okay, we'll start by just putting some clean clear water in that first circle. This is the full moon phase. So I will be dropping in some watercolor right on top. And you don't wanna have too much water, just enough that you get a nice shine. And that way when you drop the wet paint and onto the wet paper, you will see a nice fun wet on wet bleed. So just go ahead and dab in your first colors. I'm using a light bluish purple color and then leaving some areas lighter where the light is hitting. And that color will naturally spread out and as you work your colors, you can keep adding layers to make it darker. Okay, and then going in with some black and dropping in some darker areas. Some areas are darker because of the craters on the moon and then some, you'll see the surface has the little white specks. So we'll be putting in all those textures. You can use clean water and just drop in little droplets and that will also create little crater marks and you can also use your salt so if you have some coarse salt that always gives you a different texture than fine salt so play around and have fun with it all right so we're going to let that first one dry and go ahead and do the same technique on all the other moon phases so for now, we're just going to be doing the base part of the moon and we'll be adding in the darker shadows afterwards. So you can use the little technique of wet on wet and dropping in the salt for each of these little moons. All right, so when it's 100% dry, and you can see all that texture is soaked up into that salt area, you can start rubbing off the little pieces. And they should come off pretty easily. You just don't wanna to push too hard. You could tear your paper. And here's a little close up of all that texture. And also some of those edges got a little bit smudged. We can easily fix that in the next layers though. We can use our white paint and just clean up some of those edges. 
All right, so we'll add in our second layer now and build up our phases part of our picture. So the first one here, I'm gonna use a darker bluish black and just layer it right on top and then rinse my brush and then soften out the edge so that it has a little soft fuzzy blend onto the moon. This one is called the waxing crescent phase and it is mostly dark with a little crescent side lit up. Okay, and then for the second one, this is the first quarter phase. It's going to be roughly half. So the left half will be the dark side and then the lighter side on the right. And sometimes watercolors dry a little bit lighter, so go ahead and add in a little bit more pigment if you need to. Okay, the third one is the waxing gibbous, and this will be almost the reverse of the first. So there's a little crescent of dark on the left side, and then the majority of it is light. Okay, and this is the waning gibbous. And this one is the dark side is on the right hand side and it's crescent shaped. And then for that middle one, it's basically the same as the top but on the reverse side. So you'll be doing half of the moon in dark and then blending out that edge in the middle so it's a little bit softer. You can also keep a paper towel on hand and just dab up any extra water or paint. All right, and then for the last one, it's the waning crescent. So it's going to be the crescent shape on the left-hand side and the, most of the right-hand side will be the dark side. And just to mix up the colors a little bit, I'm adding a little bit more bluish and purple areas along that moon just to vary up that color and it's not just a flat gray that way. And then you can also go ahead and rinse your brush and then soften out any of those edges. And then I'm also going to add some of that bluish greenish purple color into the main moon as well, the full moon, which is in the center. You can also add more salt if you want some more texture on your second layer for that center moon. All right, and so while it's wet, I'm using my white paint and adding in drops where some of the crater spots are. So a few will be bright white and a few will be a little bit more diluted. And while it's wet, you'll see that it will naturally bleed and blend on its own. You can also clean up any of those edges around the outside. And if any of your color went outside your circle, don't worry, we can always use that white paint and clean up some of those edges. After this whole layer is dry, we'll do a final detail layer and clean up some of those spots. Okay, and then with that same white paint, you can go in and add a few more highlights to some of your moons, just where the light is hitting it. You don't wanna lose your dark side, so you can use a paper towel and just dab away any areas that are too bright. Okay, and then make one more final round of adding any layers and darkening up any areas that you like. All right, we're gonna let this dry 100% and then we'll go in with our white paint. I'm using a Copic white ink. And then with a detailed brush, just going through and cleaning up some of these edges where the paint smeared outside the line.
And for a fun detail, you can add these thin lines here where the crater is whacked to the moon. They are pretty clear when you look at most moon pictures. So I'm just putting in a few and then you can soften some of those lines as well. Okay, and then go through and add any final details that you like. Just adding little speckles of either a darker area or a lighter highlight. And then we can label the moons if you like. So I will link a little list below in the description for each of the phases if you would like to write them underneath your moons as well. Just be sure that your paper is entirely dry before you start writing so that nothing gets smeared or smudged. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you had a ton of fun painting. Also, check the description. I run a free watercolor challenge for beginners, and I also have a beginner-friendly watercolor class. It's a course all about botanical illustration, so check out the links below, and I'll see you there.